I am Brinda Nyaneswaran from WSO2 Engineering Team. In this tutorial, I am going to explain how to integrate the WSO2 API store with an external identity access management using Okta authorization server. As a first step, we need to get the instant URL, authorization server ID and the API key from the Okta server. To obtain this, go to the Okta sign up page and create the Okta developer account. Then you will be redirected to this page. Copy the instant URL from this page. After setting up your account, go to the API tab and then go to the authorization server here you can create new authorization server or you can use an existing one then copy the authorization server id at this page or you can go here and copy the authorization server id The next step is to configure the scope in the authorization server. For this, go to the API tab, then click on the authorization servers. In the scope tab, you can create new scope or you can use an existing one. To obtain the API key, go to the API tab, click on Tokens. By providing the token name, you can create new API token. Copy and save this value for later use. As a second step, you need to configure the WSO2 API manager. First, download the Client jar by navigating to this URL. Copy this jar and put it into the lib folder. Then open the API manager XML file to add the API key manager element and update the instant URL, authorization server ID, API key that you obtained previous step. At the moment, you don't need to worry about the client ID, client secret values. Now go to this URL and download the zip. After extracting that, navigate to the resources directory. Copy this JSON file and replace the existing file that were under the jaggery directory. And copy the Okta theme folder and paste it under the sub theme folder. Then open the site.json file at sub theme property as Okta. Start the API manager server. Now you have connected the API manager with Okta authorization server. Let's see how it works. Create the application by providing the application name. 
click on the add button then navigate to the production his page to register an app in Okta and generate the keys for that provide the all mandatory parameters and click on generate keys button then you can get the client id client secret and the access token for that app you created You can also check whether that application is registered in the Okta server. So it is created an app with the direct URL we provided in the previous step. And also you can update the grant types. After clicking the update button, it will update the app details in the Okta server. You can also check whether it is updated in Okta or not. So it is updated with the provided redirect URL. In previous steps we have created an access token so we can regenerate the access token by clicking regenerate button. So it will invalidate the old token and create the new one. And you can also edit the application details in API Manager. And for that, click on the edit button. To delete an application in Okta, click on delete. It will be delete an app in the Okta server. You can also provision an auth client that is already created in the Okta server. To enable this option, open the site.json file and set map existing auth apps property as true. Then create the app in ABI Manager. Click on provide keys button under the map existing auth keys. Now go to the Okta server and click on the app that you want to map. Copy the client ID and client secret values from this app. Then paste it here. Provide the token scope and the grant type values. Click on serve. Then it will be generate the access token for that app need to update the api manager xml file with the values of client id client secret which you created in the previous steps now we can validate the access token by subscribing to the api Go to the API Publisher to deploy the SAML API. Click on Deploy SAML API. Edit the created API to add the API resource level scope. Click on Manage. Add new scope called test. Then add the scope 
to the particular API resource. Publish that API. Navigate to the API store. Subscribe to the API using already created app. Then go to the API console. Copy the access token value from the application page and paste it here. So this resource is restricted to the scope called test. Then try to invoke the API resource that you created with the access token that you created earlier. So you can see the response from the API. Now let's try with a different scope which is not allowed to access this resource. So we need to regenerate the access token with different scope. Copy the access token value. Then try to invoke that API with the created token then it will not allow to access that API resource.